How the Founder of FedEx Gamble Saved the Company Would you ever gamble the future of your business? Frederick Wallace Smith, the founder of FedEx, did just that. In the early 1970s, his company was on the brink of bankruptcy and he had one weekend in Las Vegas to save it. This is the extraordinary story of how a daring gamble not only rescued FedEx but also transformed it into the global shipping giant we know today. Strap in as we explore the roller coaster journey of a man who bet it all to change the world of package delivery. Hello everyone, welcome back to Documentaries Wire. But before we dive into the video, we would greatly appreciate your support. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons below. Frederick Wallace Smith's journey to becoming the visionary founder of FedEx was shaped by early challenges and an unyielding spirit. During his childhood, he faced a debilitating condition known as leg calf perthes disease, which disrupted his mobility and confined him to a wheelchair for a time. This experience not only instilled resilience, but also fueled his determination to overcome adversity. Growing up, Fred encountered his fair share of bullies. These trials honed his ability to persevere in adversity. One of Fred's greatest passions was flying. He earned his pilot's license at a young age, and it was during this time that the seeds of his groundbreaking shipping concept were sown. While studying at Yale University, he authored a college paper that introduced the idea of an integrated air-to-ground system for overnight package delivery. This concept laid the foundation for FedEx. Despite presenting a revolutionary concept, Fred received a less than stellar C grade from his economics professor, who was unconvinced by the feasibility of the idea. However, this setback only steeled Fred's resolve to bring his vision to life. He knew that the future of shipping could be transformed through an integrated network, and he was unwavering in his commitment to prove it. But Fred's plans weren't just shaped by his childhood and academic experiences. His time in the U.S. Marine Corps during the Vietnam War played a pivotal role in influencing his future business vision. While serving in the military, he had a front row seat in logistics and shipping. As a navigator, Fred's responsibilities gave him a unique perspective on how the military handled sending and receiving goods. He quickly recognized numerous inefficiencies in the military's shipping and supply chain operations. There were instances where supplies took far too long to reach their intended destinations, delaying the military's effectiveness in critical situations. During his time in the barracks, Fred found solace in playing blackjack. Little did he know that this card game, Initially just a distraction from the horrors of wars would profoundly impact his life and the future of shipping. Fred also worked at his father-in-law's business, Arkansas Aviation Sales, after his military service. Initially, the company primarily focused on aviation servicing and repair. However, Fred's keen eye for improvement quickly identified issues with shipping and logistics. Shipping parts from one location to another took an excessive amount of time, causing frequent delays in getting the necessary components for the business. Fred's vision for a more efficient shipping system began to take shape. His idea involved a combination of air and ground transportation, optimizing the delivery process. Non-passenger planes would transport packages to a central sorting hub, which streamlined the process. This innovative hub-and-spoke model could revolutionize shipping logistics and make it more efficient. Fred's dedication to his idea led him to approach the Federal Reserve, America's central banking system. He hoped to establish a partnership to expedite the delivery of checks, which often took 10 days to process at that time. His proposed system would reduce this turnaround time to just 24 hours. The Federal Reserve saw the potential and agreed to the collaboration. This partnership inspired the initial name of the company, Federal Express. FedEx's journey was officially underway, with its first major client being the Federal Reserve. Even though the partnership with the Federal Reserve eventually ended, Fred retained the name Federal Express for the company. It wasn't until 1994 that the name was changed to FedEx Corporation, as most people commonly called it FedEx. But just as FedEx gained momentum, 
the company faced an immense challenge in the 1973 oil crisis. The political tensions in the Middle East led to the organization of the petroleum exporting countries imposing an oil embargo on countries they believed were supporting Israel. This includes the United States, where FedEx operated. The oil prices quadrupled due to the embargo, presenting a dire situation for FedEx. Rising fuel costs hit the company hard. With a fleet of 14 Falcon aircraft, FedEx daily operating costs skyrocketed. In the first 26 months of business, the company incurred estimated losses of $29 million. The situation was dire, and investors were understandably reluctant to inject more capital while oil prices showed no signs of relenting. In a desperate bid to salvage the company, Fred Smith emotionally appealed to his loyal employees. He asked them to hold on to their paychecks for as long as possible, postponing their cashing to help keep the company afloat. Even more remarkably, FedEx's pilots and drivers went to great lengths. They used their personal credit cards to purchase fuel and seeking reimbursement later, knowing the precarious financial position of the company. Fred Smith himself stopped drawing any pay from the company since there was very little to take. With the company on the verge of bankruptcy, he attempted to secure an emergency cash infusion by pitching a potential investment deal with General Dynamics. However, the deal fell through due to the volatile economic climate, leaving FedEx in an increasingly difficult financial situation. Fred was down to the company's last $5,000 in the bank, and a fuel bill of $24,000 loomed large with a deadline of Monday approaching. This part is where everything took a truly dramatic turn. Facing an imminent financial collapse, Fred Smith took an extraordinary and high-stakes gamble. With the company's last $5,000, he embarked on a last-ditch journey to Las Vegas, Nevada, desperate to save FedEx from bankruptcy. The risks were massive, as failure in the gambling venture would mean the end of the business he had worked so hard to build. Fred was no stranger to blackjack, a game he had played for fun and as a brief respite from the horrors of war during his time in the U.S. Marine Corps. In the 1970s, blackjack tables were sometimes played with just one deck of cards, making it more possible for skilled players to count cards and gain an advantage. Fred, with his military background, had developed these card counting skills. His gamble in Las Vegas was far from a smooth ride. There were moments of happiness and despair. He would win a few hands only to lose a few more, with his earnings fluctuating as unpredictably as the game itself. However, Fred's determination and skill eventually paid off. At one point, he managed to accumulate $35,000, feeling unstoppable. Yet, as the cards turned, his confidence waned. In the end, Fred decided to quit while he was ahead. He transformed the company's last $5,000 into $27,000. This is a remarkable turnaround that allowed him to pay the looming fuel bill and keep FedEx's planes in the sky for another week. This audacious gamble in Las Vegas marked a pivotal moment in the history of FedEx, enabling the company to continue its journey to success. Fred's team and investors were initially taken aback by his unorthodox approach. They were astounded by the audacity of using the company's last funds for gambling. But Fred's winning streak and resourcefulness quickly turned their skepticism into awe. His ability to turn $5,000 into $27,000 was seen as nothing short of miraculous. With these winnings, Fred not only settled the pressing fuel bill, but also used them to attract more investors. Within weeks, he secured $11 million in new investments, marking the first profitable year for FedEx in 1976. The influx of capital allowed the company to expand its destination list and acquire larger planes, providing a solid foundation for future growth. Following this recovery, FedEx achieved significant milestones and rapid expansion. In 1981, they opened their first world hub in Memphis, becoming the largest air freight company in the U.S. They continually invested in technology, 
becoming the first U.S. company to use computers to manage and track packages. By 1983, their sales exceeded $1 billion for the first time. The company's success continued through the 1980s with further international expansion and the acquisition of various businesses, making FedEx a global logistics and shipping powerhouse. Additionally, Fred Smith and FedEx played a pivotal role in lobbying for the deregulation of air cargo. This ultimately led to the Airline Deregulation Act of 1978. This act removed many government restrictions on airline routes, pricing, and market entry, opening the door for FedEx expansion and competition in the air cargo industry. In the 1980s and beyond, FedEx expanded its international operations, providing overnight services to Canada, Europe, and Asia. They introduced innovations like the Super Tracker system, allowing customers to track packages in real time. In 1984, FedEx became the first U.S. company to receive an all-cargo route from the Civil Aviation Administration of China. By the 1990s, FedEx delivered to 128 countries and territories worldwide, solidifying its status as a global logistics leader. Fred Smith's gamble and the remarkable growth of FedEx remain a testament to the entrepreneurial spirit determination, and strategic vision that shaped the company into an international giant in the logistics and shipping industry. And so, in the remarkable journey of Fred Smith and FedEx, we find a powerful testament to the unwavering human spirit. It teaches us that even in the face of adversity, innovation and determination can shape the course of industries. The story of FedEx shows that resilience combined with a bold vision, can lead to transformative change. Now, ask yourself, what challenges might you overcome? And what innovative ideas could you bring to life? Share this inspiring story, and together, let's discover the potential within us all. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more incredible stories like this.